work. So whatever's in the parentheses, okay, that's the input. That's what you're putting into your function in place of x. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our function, okay, right here, and whatever's in the parentheses, that's our input. That's what goes in for x, okay, on the right side. So we're gonna be replacing x with x plus h. So this is gonna be one over x plus h minus five minus, okay, that's this minus here, f of x, and I just think of that as f of x is just this whole function, the original function, so one over x minus five divided by h, and it's the limit as h is approaching zero. Okay, now, you don't wanna make this mistake. You don't wanna put zero in too soon. If you do, you're gonna get zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form, which means that you know we can't really uh, you know, really make any conclusions about this um, at this point. So what we really want is we want to simplify this down further, okay, before we substitute zero in for h. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply by the common denominator. So what we're doing is we're going to multiply by x plus h minus five and x minus five. But whatever we do to the numerator, we want to do to the denominator, right? Because we want to keep this equivalent, so we just want to, this is like multiplying by the number one. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna distribute this quantity to this fraction and to this fraction. Okay, so you're with me so far? So when we do that, when we distribute that to this fraction, the, the x plus h minus five and this x plus h minus five, they're gonna cancel one another out. You're just gonna have x minus five times one, which is x minus five. Minus, right, when we distribute this to this fraction, the x minus fives are gonna cancel out because this is in the numerator, this is in the denominator, right? So we're just gonna have one times x plus h minus five. Now, you wanna be uh, careful because when you're subtracting, you're really subtracting this entire thing. So some students forget to put the parentheses. You wanna treat this as a group, okay, and you're subtracting this entire group. Okay, and then the last step here is we're just going to multiply this whole thing times the denominator, but don't FOIL the denominator. Just leave it in factored form, and you'll see why in a minute because we're going to get some cancellation that occurs. Okay, so now what we can do is we can distribute this negative. Okay, so that's going to be x minus 5 minus x minus h plus 5. So we're just distributing like so, and that's all over h times x plus h minus five times x minus five. And you can see the x's are canceling, the fives are canceling. We're just left with negative h over h. And now what you can do is you can divide these both by h. You're just gonna be left with negative one over x plus h minus five times x minus five. It's the limit as h approaches zero. We can put zero now in for h and we're just left with negative one over x minus five times x minus five, which is x minus five squared. So this is our difference quotient. And again, remember what the difference quotient is. This is a formula, it's a general formula for finding the slope, okay, the rate of change at any point along this graph. So if we wanted to find, well, what's the slope of the tangent line when x is four, right? It's gonna be, four minus five, which is negative one. Negative one squared is one. Negative one divided by one is negative one. So it's gonna have a negative one slope. But if we were to do it at, let's say, uh, when x is 10, you know, you're gonna get a different slope because you're at, you know, the graph is not going up at a continuous rate. So let's look at another example. Let's look at this one over here. F of x equals x cubed plus two. Okay, so we're gonna go through that same exact process. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna substitute x plus h in for x. Okay, now if there was another x here, right here, we would also put x plus h in for that x as well. So wherever, whatever is inside this parentheses is gonna go in for x on the right side of the equation. Okay, that's how functions work. This is the input and the f of x is the y value, that's the output. But in this case, we just have one x here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace x with x plus h, the quantity cubed plus two. Okay, so that's, that's this part here, minus, f of x, which is the original function, that's this whole thing right here, so minus x cubed plus two, all divided by h, and it's the limit as h is approaching zero. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand this out. x plus h cubed, okay, if you remember Pascal's triangle, I'll go over here, remember Pascal's triangle, one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, okay, these are the coefficients, we're gonna use this to expand. So this is actually gonna be x cubed plus 
3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed plus 2 minus x cubed minus 2, I'm just distributing the negative, all divided by h. Now, if you want to see this, you can do this another way too. You could write this as x plus h three times, okay, foil these two together, get an answer, then distribute the x and then distribute the h, simplify, and you're going to get this. But using Pascal's triangle is going to be a lot faster. Okay, so now we're just going to simplify the x cubes cancel because one's positive, one's negative. The twos and the negative twos are going to cancel. And you notice how each term, each group has an h in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor that h out. Okay, so we're going to factor the h out. This is going to be 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared all divided by h. And you can see the h's are canceling in the numerator and denominator. All right. So now, remember, it's the limit as h is approaching 0. If I put 0 in for h, this whole term is going to be 0. And this is going to be 0. And we're left with 3x squared. So this is our difference quotient simplified. And remember what the difference quotient is, it's actually a general formula, okay, for finding the slope anywhere along this graph. So if I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals one, right, the slope would be one squared is one times three is three. So it would have a, you know, an incline at that point of, of three, an instantaneous rate of change. So I hope this helped you. I hope you are understanding how to work with the difference quotient better. I'll have some uh, links in the cards uh, for some of my other videos regarding the same topic, and I'll look forward to seeing you in some of the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.